Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm so excited to show you. Um, it's kind of a, a tutorial because I'm going to go step by step how I made this lovely mermaid style bracelet. Let me uh, bring this into focus here. Um, I followed uh, Spoiled Rotten Beads from the UK. I followed her tutorial and actually she gives a link to a free pattern um, download. So um, I did do a bit different on the closures. Um, I didn't like the way she had it so I did my own little thing. So I um, yeah, I, I made a video about this, me making it and following her video. So this one, um, I'm going to try and do a step-by-step. -step. Uh, it's not like a totally polished tutorial, but one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is I made a bracelet last night for my niece, and it has to be shipped today. And this was the only... Um, like I only had these, uh, I think there's four millimeter check polish, check glass beads left. So I wanted to show you how amazing these look before I ship this off. Um, so I thought I'd make the uh, video and then uh, send these off to her. So I wanted to do that before because the next set is slightly different colors. So this is the last of this colorway, but you can see how amazing it looks with all these cool colors. So you can do a different mermaid. So I'm going to set this one aside and I will finish this off camera, but I will get started with the next colors. And I have a bunch of these coming up. So I also wanted to just show you, I got these new lobster clasp, um, lobster claw I guess is the style but it's a fish and it looks amazing so the um, it's kind of an antique uh, uh, copper and that's going to go on the bracelet for my niece and you, there's a little fin here and you just pull that and it's a bit stiff but it's so cute I couldn't resist so hopefully it won't be too hard for her to manipulate so let's put that one aside and the other thing I wanted to mention so I'm going to go through the different components so you need two tubes of ginkgo beads and these were on I think they're still on clearance at art beads so definitely uh, take advantage and they also have their 60% off sale that's good till Monday um, so what I do is I take two colors usually um, this one's a uh, Rosaline and this one is metallic suede pink. Um, this one, let me see if I have the tube here. This is a uh, smoky topaz. I find the smoky topaz is amazing. It's hard to get the lighting. So I don't know if you can see, this is Smoky Topaz and this is Smoky Topaz. So it already has a couple of variations right here and here of color. So it really adds some texture. And then this is the uh, suede pink. Um, so, or No, that's not the suede pink. That is suede purple. So if you're interested, and I couldn't tell you what these check glass beads are. These were ones I had in my stash, and they didn't have a label on them. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how I mix them so that you get a random pattern. It's so much fun. <laughs> so you need those. You need, and these are not the correct tubes for these. These were beads that I got uh, in a big bag. So you're going to need um, 11 o and an 8 o of a color that kind of matches this, but doesn't necessarily, like I used it on this one, and you can see how nice it matched. So maybe a kind of neutral color. So this copper is kind of neutral. It matches a lot of stuff. And I'm going to use these um, metallic 
uh, four millimeter check glass beads and so let's talk about the four millimeter um, I do have a few strands here to pick from um, this is about it from my stash of these size it's not a size I usually buy so for this you definitely need it I had a few strands of three millimeter and I thought oh maybe I could do if you look at this it almost looks like these are maybe a bit too big for them get that in focus here maybe a bit too big they seem to kind of pop out a bit you can see the thread there but I tried it last night with these three millimeters and there's just no way they're way too small and I suspect what would happen is your ginkgo beads would squeeze together uh, when you pull your thread so definitely I think the four millimeter is what you need for that so let's set those guys aside the other thing I wanted to mention is when I made the first one I had a bunch left over and I say a bunch I had nine left over so I had enough to make um, a set of a pair of earrings um, but this is all I had left from the set last night so there's two four six so I could still do a three but if you notice there's three and three of course right so one's going to have two purples and one's going to have two topaz. So we'll figure that out. Um, definitely want to use those extras. So I'm going to put those aside and that aside. So let's really move these because we're going to lose them if we don't. And I had this for a stop bead, but I think I'm going to use one of the copper beads and incorporate it into my pattern so that's a hint that she gives you so you're going to need a needle and let's talk about the fire line so the initial one all i had was the four pound fire line and it was really hard to manipulate um i think i have some thread here to show you how thin it is yeah so this is how thin the four pound is and then this you can see the difference with this this is the four pound so it's very soft this is let me get this in focus there this is the um 10 pound that I bought the other day so I would definitely use the 10 pound you can use the 4 pound or a 6 pound the 6 pound would probably work as well really well um, the 4 pound worked but it was hard to manipulate but once it was done that's with the 4 pound it, I actually like how kind of floppy it is and let's show you the one the one with the 10 pound is still nice and floppy so that's that so let's put those aside that aside stick those needles there get rid of that and i already went ahead i pulled a wingspan out these and here's the fun part so you're going to take your ginkgo beads out Plop them down, make sure they're all out of the tube. Sometimes they get stuck in the tube. And plop the others on. And mix them up. And that is all I do. And try not to pick the ones you want when you're stringing it. So we need 38 beads to begin with. Two, four, six. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8. So we're going to set those aside and you are going to string all of these on. You're going to string it from the peak 
Here, I'll just leave it there so I can see this. I might um, tilt this up a little more. Actually, we'll just do it that way and fix the lighting a bit. There. Okay, so you're going to go from the peak, this bottom piece, in like that. And you're going to do that for all of them. So always go from the bottom little triangle peak and just grab them doesn't matter which side because they're going to flop onto they're going to nestle so trust me on that one so just go through and grab them and pull them on and that is and this is like the biggest part of the bracelet I mean, you imagine 36 beads, you saw this needle might be too big. It might be just the cord, the thread. So, so I just looked on Jill Wiseman's site. So it is, um, I have to keep an eye on the time here. It's 9 a.m. here in Nova Scotia, and the sale is starts at 10 a.m. Central Time on Jill Wiseman's site. But it looks like she's already got all the the markers for the sale up, but nothing. You can't access anything. She said to bring it up and then just. Um, refresh your page at the correct time so 10 a.m. is when it starts so that looks like it's going to be noon here in Nova Scotia so so it's hard to go random with this <laughs> as you can see I, I'm kind of picking where I want to pick but it still works really well so I wouldn't worry too much but definitely I would suggest doing the random there is some kind of neat patterns you can create but what that does when you do the patterns it totally takes you out of the kind of um, the illusion of it being a I may have too much line on here so you see by pulling it down and just kind of wiggling it a bit. Let me this one flip that one. So let's flip. So they kind of nestle into each other. Flip that one in there. Pull it down. And that's what you get. So they nestle. Focus that a little bit. Looks kind of dark to me, but I don't know. My, uh, it's uh, overcast outside today. But there, you see how it, they nestle. So that's the biggest part of your bracelet. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna pull this down so you can see the top end. This is where you're gonna add a. You're going to turn your thread and you're going to go down and you're going to add the rest of your beads. So to do that, we're going to start by putting the little embellishment. So you need two, um, these, oh, I can't remember. Uh, there are 11 O's and one 8 O. And these might be they might be this might be a 10 actually you know what actually I think that's what it is these are check glass beads and the, that one is a 10 I think because when I went last night to use 11 O's I found them too big and kind of sticking out a bit so you might have to play with that to find what works for you I just put that aside so you're gonna do an 11 O 
and it's really a 10 it should be an 8 and you're going to go from that hole to this hole and pull that through all the way there like that could be my light here there that's a little better there. so the next step is adding your four millimeter check glass beads and I'm just going to pour these all out hopefully I have enough I better count them before I start adding them. I think I did that last night. I was like, oh no. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight. I think it takes 18 on each side. Two, four, six, eight, ten. There's going to be enough. Two, four, six, eight. So that's, yeah, I'm not going to worry about the counted piles. So let's just, so now we've gone through the bottom of this. Oh, wait, sorry. This, we went, we have to put our, the other ginkgos on. Sorry. <laughs> so now we're going to go through the top of the ginkgo bead. So we've come down through the bottom, go through the top of that one. And we're going to set it into this one here. And the best way that she suggests at Spoiled Rotten Beads is to leave your work on your surface and pull it through. And that way it doesn't get all messed up. If you hold it in your hand, they start flipping and then you get confused. So take it from the top and put it on the top of the other one so it's kind of like a puzzle piece you're setting them in eek that got tangled I definitely have too much I think I put a little more than a wingspan thinking trying to be smart <laughs> that didn't work Oh, now I'm all flippy floppy here. Let me fix this. These four are in the wrong spot. There. Pull that down. Pull these tight. There. And sorry, folks. That's how fast I get moved off camera. It's really. Let me uh, bring it down a bit so that I don't get moved off camera. Okay. So, and again, try to do random. And what I do is I just put my finger on the bead in the bracelet and pull it through. And it just slots in there. And it doesn't really matter which side of the top of the bead you take, it's going to flip anyway. what I mean it's gonna flip all the way this um, fire line the stronger fire line gets a little um, tight so grab the next one track of my thread here. See what I mean, Hut? Flip that one over. 
So this part I find a bit fiddly. That's the only part to this that I find a bit. And once you get going though, it really starts to take shape. Like I said, it doesn't matter because if I were to use this side, it would just flip to the other side. Okay, I'm going to continue with this off camera. It might be easier for me to do it if I don't have the camera blocking my hands. And I'll be right back when this part is done. Okay, so I've added them all. Now, if you see it looks like there's one missing here so this was the last one I added so we're gonna add one here so that it's even and I just wanted to show you just to pay attention to you could add that if you want but you notice it's missing the bottom piece there's a good one there's this little one the little peak at the bottom is not quite well formed so we're going to put that one aside and we'll grab this one again from the top and pull it through and of course my cord is under the camera <laughs> and just move that thread over and slide it in there so now this was our stop bead so we're going to incorporate that into the bracelet. So let's go ahead and pick up an 11 -0, an 8 -0, and then this 11 -0. So it does have the thread looped around it. You can take that out and create a knot and weave it in right away. Or what I did was I left it just to keep keep the tension in the bracelet. And then at the end, when I go to bead it, I unknot that and then weave it through. So we're just going to put that through. Um, I, I'm just, I need to think here for a second. Okay, so we're going to go through that 11 0. We're going to go through this um, ginkgo. And we're going to go through this ginkgo, but we're going to pop out of this one at the top because we're going to turn and come back so we can add our four millimeter. So let's do that like this. There we go. And you're going to pull that tight or snug. And just like that, so that's what it should look like. So yeah, you can definitely see you'd want to unhook that later. So now we're going to go over the top of that. I think that's what, yeah, over the top. This part I find a bit kind of fiddly and then you end up with a string here and a string there but because the way these two whole beads go I think it's inevitable that you're going to get a bit of thread so you might want to use a different color thread so that it's sorry <laughs> I must have hit my uh, mouse and started a video. So I'm going to pull that tight and now we're going to go through this one. So we're turning our thread around. Actually, what I think what I did the last time is I added my, let me see on this one. So that was the bottom. So I did those three. Yeah, 
I think I added it right away. So I added two um, 11 O's, an 8 O, and two in that spot. So then when I came to do the clasp, I just had to add this, this section here. Yeah, let's do that. I found it was a lot more polished than trying to do it at the end. So let's pour a few of those out. Those are the 8 O's. And these guys, teeny tiny guys. So I think I need two of these, one of these, two of these. Like that. And then through the hole, and let's see what that looks like. I might have too many on there, but we'll see. Let's move this thread out of the way. That was our starter thread. No, I think that's going to work. Because once we start weaving the other part of the class, that will pull tight. Perfect. Okay, now for the <laughs> these guys. <laughs> I was jumping ahead earlier, so just again do your random thing. And weave them in. Oops, this through one. Should move this over here. Get my Thread in the right spot, and that's it. I think I can turn this. It's easy. I work better from right to left. Okay, grab the next one. And there. Like that. Next one. These are so much fun. I cannot get over the colors, how they really create this amazing effect. Somebody did an awesome job designing <laughs> these colors. So I think if I had a more purpley bead, uh, four millimeter, it would uh, really match these. Well, I mean, they call these pink, but they look purple to me, lavender maybe. So, and that's it. So again, I'll continue that till I get to the end. That's what it looks like. There. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we got to the one side of these four millimeters. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and add four 11 O's. And that's going to create my little edge along here. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these beads. I'm going to go through the other one as well, but we'll turn our needle down. Like that. Because that's going to create part of our clasp. So don't forget to go through this one as well. That. And add four more 11 O's. Like that. And you're going to go through the top of this next ginkgo. And don't cross over like that. <laughs> Oh, what did they do here? There we go. Like that. 
there. So you've created and then we'll create a loop for our jump ring. Now you're going to start adding the other side of the four millimeter beads. Put that in that hole. I'm going to just hang on to that. And again, watch that your thread doesn't cross over, and it did. There. Just like that. So there. So we're going to go ahead and add all the way through till we get to the end, and then we'll finish it up. I'll add one more so you can see what I was doing here. So you can see it looks awesome. So you know I was kind of picky with the four millimeters matching the the purpley pink color but you know what part of the randomness too is this kind of coppery metallic look so you know whatever you have try it you never know what it's going to look like and this is so simple to weave in and out if you don't like it just take it apart and start over so i am going to go ahead and finish these and then i'll come back and show you how to finish it off and that is how easy it is so be right back okay so we're done putting the four millimeter check glass beads on and here's our thread coming out of this ginkgo so now we're going to add on we're going to do the same as this one so we're going to add on two 11 o's and one eight uh, let me see where does that take us two 11 o's and one eight oh i think that's what we need let's check two like that and we are going to see i think i'm trying to i'm trying to copy my other one so i have that there and then i added Yeah, see, I th think I went through two here. Let's do two more 11 O's. See if that does it. So like that. And then we're going to come down through here. I think that's what I did. Actually, I think think now you're going to go down through this hole because then when I come back up I'm going to create my loop these here are going to go in a circle instead of they seem to be going down but they're going to pop up so let's go through that hole because what we need to do is weave through this so I think we're going to do the same as we did earlier so we're going to go through this ginkgo and this one and then we're going to bring our thread around this one we might as well do it in the same spot that we did before so it's a bit tight there we go smoother and then make sure that's not tangled here this was the tail and there we go perfect so now we're going to go over that one and down through the two ginkgos there try and find the hole here there we go Eeks, it just came out again there we go and we're not going to go through any beads yet Or are we yes we are we're gonna go through these two so this part here is a bit finicky and I'm sure with your skills you can um, 
do your own thing. I'm just going to pull it through that one, but I'm going to grab that one as well. But I just wanted to make sure this is tight now because that's going to be your tension in your bracelet. So go through this one. Like that. Now we're going to add on three 11 O's. And we are going to add on an 8 and our clasp. Then we're going to add an 8 and three 11 O's. And that is going to create the closure. And we're going to go through these two beads so actually this might be a good time to undo this one that will help it there pull that through so take your knot out of your tail there you go so because we're going to tie that off but this way it'll allow us to go through that bead in the correct orientation. So come through the bottom like that there and then through, come back into the beads you just strung on. It looks a bit wonky, but you'll get it. And just making sure this guy is not getting tangled up and pull that tight and this is what you get so there so I'm gonna go through this a few more times to reinforce it I'll do that so let's, actually let's just go ahead and do that now won't take long because this is the finishing part and then we are gonna add the jump ring to the other end and the little bead embellishments so we might go through this a third time since that lobster clasp is quite um, heavy actually feels pretty good so now let's do it a third time <laughs> don't want to take any chances there. so what you could do too if you didn't want to string your lobster clasp right on directly you could do a jump ring but Let's uh, do this. These, um, it is getting a bit tight because this line is thicker, but it's not too bad actually. That. Okay, so now. I think it's time to pop this in and tie it off. Let's do, yeah, let's take it to here. To that one, and we're going to make a knot with the tail and we're going to put both of them through of course this is getting tangled again there bring that through create a knot let's 
see how easy these guys get tangled. There. Let me make sure this is pulled all the way. There. And tight. And then we're going to pull that through this way. Actually, we'll pull it through first, through the beads, and then down. Let's do through this one. I'm going to make a knot here, and then I'm going to weave through and be done with it. Needle through like that. And make your knot. Okay, what happened there? <laughs> That's what I want to do there. Tight. Then we're just going to weave this through and burn it off. You could do another knot further down if you were concerned. Uh, I think it's fine. There, like that, and my thread burner, that's awesome. Like that, take my thread off. So I just had maybe a tick too much on there. And we are going to weave this one in. I'm going to put this one on the needle. See if I can do that in one try with my new glasses. Almost. Let's hold it. There, it's in there. Kinda. Kinda, sorta. And just grab it with your nail and pull it through. Like that. Okay, this one, I'm, I think I'm gonna go the other way. So, go through this bead. Tight. Probably going through the knot is why it's tight there. And down this one. And I probably don't need a knot in here, but I might do one anyway. Just to be sure. There, like that. And then we're going to pop this through a few beads. That one, and that's it on that side. Like that, take that off, and burn this one off. Get rid of that piece. Now we're going to go to the bottom. And this is what we have on the bottom. And this is what we want. So we're going to need 311 f Actually, I didn't put an 80 on this one, so we've got three, five, six, seven, eight in your jump ring. So we need some thread. So we're going to add a piece on. And I'm sure there's a proper way to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let me see how quickly I can get this on. I 
Um, I'm sure there's a proper way to add thread. I do it my way. <laughs> it works for me, so... Yeah, I'm going to do this off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I do is I go down and I weave my loose thread. I leave a bit out um, because when I go to do my knot, if I pull it too tight, that will all come out. So that's how I add and then I'll cut that little end off. So I'm creating my knot here. So bringing my needle through the loop. I'm going to hang on to that piece there so it doesn't pop out and see how I'm creating a knot. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to pull that knot into that bead. I want to go all the way through to the end, so you, there, that pulled it in, and you saw that move, so we can cut that off now. There, so there, that's how I, and you can add another knot further up if you're concerned, but I'm going to do a knot on the other side, so I'm not too concerned. These needles don't, the, the ginkgo beads don't quite match up the hole, so they're kind of like back and forth. So you can just pull your needle out. And you can see this one. I want to go up through this one and then come around to this loop. So we are going to grab it exactly the thread path that we put it in. So I went through that 11 -0. We're going to go through this one and through the next one. Like with this. I believe is how I did it. No, actually you just have to go through this one. So just through that 8 -0. And now we're going to add on eight, eleven O's, and our jump ring, and pull them down, and go through this eight O again, and you're going to pull it tight, and there you have your closure so you're going to go through that a few more times and secure your thread and you are done this and In. There, pull it tight. I think that is enough on that one. So we're going to go back down, and I think I'll put the knot here. The first knot I might put two. This is pretty straightforward. Pull through, make sure it doesn't get tangled there, and make your knot like there, and go through a couple of beads. And of course, it doesn't want to. Sometimes when you squeeze the beads together, it pops through. So let's make a knot here, pull that tight, and that should take care of it. So that's probably. This last knot's probably a bit of overkill, but let's pull the thread through and look at that. Burn this off. 
and we are done. There we go. Oof, I burnt that a little too much. <laughs> Get some. And that is your lovely, awesome mermaid bracelet. Let's put the clasp on. Like that. There you go. So, you have to try these. These were so much fun. There you go. Thanks for watching, everyone.